Get ready. It's time for a well-deserved break, Pittsburgh, with Heather Abraham and David Highfield. From the KDKA TV studios, it's Pittsburgh Today Live. You know, when you start the day with a plate of carbs in front of you, uh, how bad could that day really be? Exactly. You know? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> it is Tuesday. It is Tasted Tuesday. And we're so excited about this because, all right, we're going to unveil what is under the close, but maybe you already saw what was in the middle of the table. Here we dun, go. Dun, One, dun. two, three. Boom, strawberry pretzel salad. So it's yes. National Pretzel Day, and we're so excited to celebrate, but we thought, what better way to celebrate? Sure, yeah, pretzels. Right. Great. We all know and love which them. Which we have here in the middle, which look, they look fantastic. From the pretzel right. shop on East Carson Street. Right, and strawberry pretzel salad, also from the pretzel shop on East Carson Street over on the south side. But this is so Pittsburgh. Like, do it you remember, so like, family reunions where and someone would make strawberry pretzel salad and as a kid I was always like where's that like wait, wait, what is that oh my gosh I need more of that delicious it's delicious so of course there's, there's cream cheese and there's the pretzels at the bottom that are all crushed up with like what brown sugar and sugar and butteriness and then and there's the, the jello the strawberry jello I mean we're tasting it like we've never had it before but you know what well we, I've never had it from the pretzel shop we've never had it from the pretzel shop so we want to try it you gotta get a bite of all the layers in one bite. Maybe we should call the pretzel shop and see, is this an individual serving? Mm. Is it an individual serving for today? Maybe we should say yes to that. I think this is a perfect individual serving. And look, they've given <laughs> us, they've given each of they've us two, two individual, individual servings, servings. <laughs> which we love. <laughs> they've actually been open though. This is so neat. The pretzel shop in the south side has been open since 1927. Which yeah. is incredible. And they still use the same brick oven that was built in 1872, and they hand twist the pretzels every day. Look at these gorgeous pretzels up here. I, I mean, they're, they're really fantastic. But the strawberry pretzel salad, I think, is the star today, at least for us. Well, um, we're going to enjoy this all hour long. We're the winners here today. We certainly are. And if I'm being completely honest, I already had a pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy, Teddy showed us the pretzels this morning. He's like, I got the goods. And I said, can I have one of those? It was That's just okay. one of those days. It's National Pretzel Day, as we've said. So we hope you find a way to celebrate as well. I'm right. still celebrating. <laughs> That's okay. You carry on. Mm. You continue to celebrate. Uh, so we're going to try this one more time. So we've been talking about Baked Alaska since last week. Whenever it somehow just came up, out of the blue, we were talking about you old recipes. You mentioned it. Right? Yeah. Yeah, we we're talking about old recipes. Of course, and you I mentioned it. Baked <laughs> recipes or baked Alaska. And then you asked this, it was such a funny question. You said, Is there fish in that? Is it and a fish? I was like, dish? It's a dessert. So since then, a lot of you have chimed in. Ah! In fact, look, oh, this we is found third the picture. Time to try. All right, so this is from a cookbook, and this is sent in by Melissa Somerville. We told you yesterday. She wanted us to know <laughs> this is baked Alaska. So it's ice cream, and then there's cake, and then there's a meringue on the top. How cool is that? So it's a thin layer of cake at the bottom. And oh, I then thought is it that was, like, oh, is that what it is at the bottom? Oh, yeah. That and then is that a mound of, like, strawberry ice cream? Mm -hmm. And then the meringue is on top? Is that what I'm seeing? Yeah, and then they... Is they, that also an individual serving? <laughs> yes, Heather, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> okay, no, but seriously, I, I've never had baked Alaska. David thinks that we should make it, but... Instead of making it, I think we should go right to the source. Someone else commented mm -hmm. that there's a place in Oakland, yes. Zara's, I think is what it's called. And we looked this morning. They have it on the menu. They have it on the menu. So I don't know. That could be our next path. The menu looks Alaska. lovely, by the way. It really I have does. never been to Zara's before. but Me it, either, but it looks what good. What a lovely menu. Anyways. Well, speaking of eating, uh, people during the pandemic, we of course know this already, that people sort of went and sought comfort food. Yeah. Uh, but the latest sort of statistic that is out there is that people are more into in fried food than ever before. So like French fries and fried chicken, even fried Oreos. There's an article in the Wall Street Journal about how people are like, craved. fried food is way up. Yeah, yeah. they craved it. Now, <clears throat> here's the thing. Here's what I'm interested in. Um, because I have looked up recipes for something that's fried because mm -hmm. we have an air fryer now and I think right. a lot of people got these like gimmicky appliances and and fun things at home during the pandemic so that you could 
cook more at home. Yeah, um, and, and some people swear by their air fryers. They love they love them. ours. It's just bulky. That's the only thing about it. It's the only thing I don't like about it. Is well, it's big. It's like, you know. And, and that's the thing about, like, stuff that you don't, like, tuck away. Like, if you leave it on the countertop, then soon your, your counter space is, like, you have been eliminated by all the appliances that are there. But yeah. you have some great appliances lined well, up, you know? Too. So what that's do you do? Too. I don't know. Uh, anyways, yeah, we love it. So uh, apparently nearly half of U.S. households now have air fryers. How about that? We don't See? have one yet. My dad has one, but we don't have one yet. Uh, and this was interesting. They report that... The, the repairs of restaurant deep fat fryers have doubled because of overuse. Deep fat fry is that what yeah. it's called? Yeah, I believe so. But, well, it's a fryer, you know, a restaurant fryer. Yeah. Um, and the number of fried foods on restaurant menus rose 5% in the first three quarters of last year. So anyway, now does it make you think that you w would like some fried chicken to go with your strawberry pretzel salad? I will tell you, you know, when you're on the road, when we had our road trip to Florida, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of places to stop to get a salad. And when you're driving, you can't really enjoy a salad. So you eat a lot of fried fast food. Well, you go through fast food places. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I get this, but I'm like in this phase right now where I'm, I don't want to look at a French fry anytime soon. Oh, which really? Is not like me. No, that's not like, what have you done with you, Heather but Abraham? You, I think you get Where to is that, Heather Abraham? <laughs> you get to that point when you've had too much of a good thing, and you right. just need to, like, step away from I will tell you, right now, as we discuss this, I am really craving <laughs> fried chicken, though. Like, I get what you mean. Like, there are moments where I don't want anything fried. Like, there are moments where I want a salad, you know, right. perhaps a strawberry pretzel salad. <laughs> But right now I'm thinking about fried chicken. Okay, well today, as we mentioned, is Tuesday, and a lot of people celebrate Taco Tuesday, and this is perfect timing to tell you about a, maybe a dream job, but you'd have to move for it because this is in Texas. And this comes to us uh, from a company called Favor, and it's a delivery company. Mm -hmm. It's like a personal assistant. It's not just food, but they can basically pick up your errands, things you might need. Yeah, So, but what they're looking for is a chief taco officer uh, for, a, is it a year or like a summer? I think it's I think just it's the, summer. Like the summer. You like, get $10,000 just for the summer. And they pay for your accommodations yes. and everything else, and they move you from one city, you spend two days in each city. Yeah, so you travel around, you eat tacos in each city, and you are on the hunt for the best tacos in the state. And then you document it. You just have to like post about it, post take videos or whatever. Media. But you know what? It's, a, it's an actual job that you could spend your summer doing this in Texas. So I think I could do that. To be a food reviewer, you have to be a lover of all food. You know? Well, that's true. Yeah. And, and I, you also I, have to be wise about it. Like, you know, yeah. I think anytime you're like critiquing someone else's thing, you have to like have, you have to be honest, but you also have to have some heart and understand that people, not everyone has the same taste as you. Right. Yeah. And a deep appreciation for like the food and how it's made yeah, exactly. and all of that stuff. Yeah. But a taco food reviewer, I could, I could do that. I feel like I know enough about the food. I'm not going to let you apply because we can't lose you here. For the but, summer job. <laughs> for I the entire summer, summer job. Where's Heather? Oh, she's gallivanting around Texas eating tacos for the summer. Did I ever tell you how many <laughs> summer jobs I've had? Really? It what are you? Insane. Okay, list, list some of it's your insane. summer jobs. Oh, I worked at an ice cream shop. I worked at a pizza shop. I worked at Giant Eagle Video when Giant Eagle used to be on the other side of the street in Shaler on Route 8. Okay. Do you <laughs> <laughs> they tore that one down. It's gone now. It's on the other side now, I think. Wait, what, you would check people out of the video store and then you would... That's right. Would you, would, rewind. Would you I don't yell know at people that. whenever they brought videos back no. late? No. Listen, each of these jobs, I was not good at keeping the job. If I didn't like it, I didn't stay. So it was on the job experience and I kind of weeded out the place. I worked at Kiwanis <laughs> Pool, their, their snack shack or whatever, for less than a day. Really? Why did you leave? Because I didn't want to do it anymore. All it my friends were fun. having fun. Oh, how terrible is that to work? Now listen, this is just me. So please keep your summer <laughs> You're jobs. You're putting down your pretzel salad. I'm going to dive it in. Keep going. <laughs> it was really <laughs> awful for me to mm -hmm. look at my friends laughing and having yeah. a great time. And for me to be pulling chicken fingers out of the fryer. I just didn't want to do it. Yeah. I didn't. I, it didn't well, need money that bad. I didn't right. care enough to get new shoes or whatever that I might. Well, thank goodness you have landed here. Where else? I've, I've had other jobs, too, I can tell you. I just have to think about it. <laughs>
Well, we were talking about traveling around Texas, and speaking of travel, several U.S. airlines are having trouble finding pilots right now, so they're doing something really, I think this is bizarre. Yes. They're, so they're, they're hiring bus companies, so the people, I, this is what I don't get from the article, and I've, I've read more than one article about this. Trying to get to the bottom of it. Right. So, like, they're putting people on buses instead of planes whenever it's a short distance away. They're now flying them, well, they're not flying them on a bus, <laughs> they're not doing that. They're driving them on a bus. I like, can you imagine? So it's like the little flights, the little flights that would have been like puddle jumper kind of things. Yeah. So they're trying it out west and they're trying it on the east coast as well. United Airlines is doing this according to the New York Post. So is American Airlines. Uh, and it's all because of a shortage of pilots right now. Could you imagine, and I don't know how this process works, so forgive me because I am very ignorant to how this, how they're setting this up, but could you imagine getting to the airport and getting ready to check your bag, and they're like, oh, no, sir, I'm sorry. Um, you need to go to the bus depot. It's right around the corner. We're well, actually maybe that's how sending they do you. it. I, who knows? I can remember for a while, LaGuardia Airport in New York was under construction. So if you flew to LaGuardia Airport, they would, like, and it was probably, like, U.S. Air at the time, you would land, and, and then they'd put you on, like, everybody would get off the plane, like, onto the tarmac, and then you would get on a bus. And then you would drive to the airport, which seemed like for Forever. And I can remember joking, like, you know, it's like, we, do we land in Greensburg and we're driving in from Greensburg to New York? It's just right there. Well, and that's the thing, too. I think, especially for people who travel a lot, and maybe if you're a business traveler and you're flying between two very short distance cities, because yeah, that's, you that's just true. need to get there and get back, that's true. you could drive. You choose not to. You chose the plane. You did not choose the bus, correct? Yeah, at least, hopefully you get a good nap on the bus, at least. I don't know. I, it, and we how just report much it. We don't make it up. Do you get money back? I would think you do. I would think they have to give you money back, right? I don't know. We're I'm, gonna put you on a bus, Heather. I, <laughs> I love flying. I can't fly right now. They're so tickets are so expensive. That's true. You can't go anywhere. You can't do anything for cheap. See. Nothing is affordable anymore. <laughs> All right, well, one place you could have gone, and you could have gotten on a bus or driven there or taken a plane, was Chicago this past weekend. In fact, the, Krista, our producer, so wanted to send me. She wanted to send you so bad. I, I know, and it just didn't work out. Uh, but it, they had this event called Golden Con. Thank you for being a friend or Fan. fan. <laughs> It was a big celebration, though, of all thing gold, things Golden Girls. Right. Which was, it would have been a blast if we could have gotten there. And here's a little bit of video from Facebook yeah. of what went so down. This, I think this is maybe even the final ceremony, but I'm not sure of that. But so, you know, people dress up as their favorite characters. There are more than 2,000 people showed up. They had question and answer sessions. You know, all the main stars have now passed away, Betty White being the, the most recent one that passed away. But some of the guest stars, like, if you, were, if you really know Golden Girls, so, like, the woman who played <laughs> Dorothy's snooty author friend in that one episode, and I think she was also in St. Elsewhere. She's a wonderful actress. Oh, sure. She was there. Relatives of Rue McClanahan were there. Uh, lots of people dressed up as the main characters. They had souvenirs you could buy. Like, they really made it a fun time. I bet. Yeah. It would be nice to have something like that here. I bet it would be well Maybe we could attended. lobby to hold it next year Can here we in reach Pittsburgh. Out to the organizers? <laughs> Why Chicago of all places, do you I don't think? know. You'd think maybe in Miami, because that's where the show was set. But you know what? It's probably wherever the organizers of this wound up like, being. Most people can take a bus here, so we'll make it Chicago. <laughs> yes, no more flying these days. All right. <laughs> We're being told that we need to move things along, so we will. And coming up here on the show, it is time to get out your fiercest black and gold because <gasps> there's a party going on, yes, at the History Center. I know those two. Selena is there to get the shindig started. We're going to tell you why this multi-level throwdown is just so much more than a good time. Look, it says Katie K.A. Can't wait to check in with her. Plus, it's more than just education that's happening in Washington County. How a simple pathway is creating better health and possibly saving an ecosystem. Daisy is introducing us to today's Green Gift winner. It is Tuesday, April 26th, and though it is National Pretzel Day, don't get yourself in a twist. Yeah, that's actually our only pretzel <laughs> pun today. Our producer, Krista, writes all of those. Thank you so much for spending your morning with us. We're going to be right back.